don't look so nervous. I'm not going to ask you anything. <laughs> okay, Rachel, thank Sorry. you for joining me. Thank you for having me. That's okay. Um, now, you're obviously a massive sports fan in general. Yeah. Would racing be one of your favourite sports though? Yeah, I guess racing for me has kind of had a few different lives over the course of my life. So I started off in show jumping um, and that's how I graduated onto Sky Sports News. So obviously on Sky Sports News, racing is a huge part of our coverage. I love covering the racing whenever they're like, who's going to update the racing today? I'm like, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> um, I rode in a charity race before, which we'll talk about a little bit later, which was a disaster, but a huge <laughs> kind of introduction to me as to when you watch racing on television, you don't realise how skilled the jockeys are and how minute the fractions are. So that was a big education for me. Um, and obviously now Sky Sports has the Sky Sports Racing Channel as well, so there's huge coverage around that. But yeah, growing up as well, we grew up just down the road from Leopardstown Racecourse, so it was literally the end of Christmas, pop up to the Leopardstown. And all uh, your family would go together to All the, the family would go, so we'd literally have our Christmas dinner next day, get dressed, go up to the Leopardstown race course, and Dad is a big sports fan, so he's always taken us to be at GAA events. Uh, rugby, Leinster Rugby was down the road from us, and obviously Leopardstown was the closest. So yeah, we spent a lot of time on that race course, and that's, I think that's probably where my love of horses began. And um, your love of sport as well, probably it all kind of lead, leading into one. Yeah. Now, do you have a favorite ever race horse? I was thinking about this <laughs> and, oh gosh, there's so many. I've, se I've seen Frankel race before, which was incredible at Ascot. Um, one of my favorite memories, uh, memories was seeing Corto Star running at Kempton. He won his fifth King George then. But I think given the day that you're asking me this question, Big Orange has retired. Yes. And obviously there's a little bit of a connection now with me and my husband. So he would probably kill me if I didn't mention Big Orange. <laughs> he's, he's such, I mean, you know Big Orange through, through your family as well. And he's just down the road. He's just down the road now. He's retired today. Um, and he's he's such a popular horse, isn't he? And I was there in the day. It's like a ho horse that the nation loves type yeah. thing, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. So um, I was there in the day of the Gold Cup. And it was so incredibly amazing and overwhelming to be kind of in the parade ring and see the Gredleys with Big Orange and you know he came round the corner I was thinking oh my goodness I think he's gonna win this race <laughs> and he just went on and he went on and he went on. and he's just a real he's a real warrior isn't he a kind of real yeah. people's horse as well so yeah I think he's I think gonna that's go a good choice on yeah. <laughs> now on to jump racing you yes. are going to be joining us in the racing breaks at Cheltenham when did you first start going to Cheltenham did you start going for work or was it for pleasure so my first year at Cheltenham at the festival, I rode in the charity race. That was your first ever time at Cheltenham? Yes, yeah, so that was my introduction to Cheltenham. So I'd moved over to Sky Sports the summer before and I show jumped up, up to a certain level. So my boss was like, you know, you're comfortable around horses. We're going to, if you're happy, put you in a horse race at the Cheltenham Festival and it happens to fall on St. Patrick's Day, which is the day that every Irish person gets in a boat or gets on a plane and goes over to Cheltenham. So I was like, what? That's no problem, I can do that. And I was very fortunate in that Ed Chamberlain was doing the Monday Night Football at Sky. So he said, you know, I'll help you. Um, I've got a lot of connections in racing. So he organized with Andrew Balding that I could go and ride out at theirs a few days a week. So Andrew's father, Ian, who has so many wonderful stories about, you know, the queen coming and he's just a wonderful man. Yeah. And he gave me one of their kind of schoolmasters in the yard called Isterbrack. Isterbrack? Mm -hmm. Isterbrack, it wouldn't have been Isterbrack because he'd be too famous. <laughs> Ispahan, even. Isterbrack, I wish. Um, Ispahan. And so I rode Ispahan out maybe two or three days a week. And Sky would come down and film my progress going along. and Not what you want when you're trying to learn. It was horrendous. <laughs> I remember the first time we did a live with Sky Sports News. And they mic'd me up. And this was the first time I'd been on a racehorse on yeah. a gallop. And they said, right, just follow a few of the horses up, stay, you know, a couple of lengths back and you'll be absolutely fine. So we were coming down the, the bend as you come around towards the gallop and you can feel the horse, you can sense it underneath you as you yeah. are from racing yourself. And his ears pricked, Isfahan. Oh no. <laughs> and from my show jumping days, I'm used to having my hands up here. So I was like, right, if I just move my hands up, he'll probably slow down a little bit, which is not what you're meant to do. <laughs> And he just literally pricked his ears, came round the bend and just took off. Bearing in mind, this is live on Sky Sports News. <laughs> I have a microphone. 
they had to bleep out some things because <laughs> all sorts of language. I was absolutely terrified. But the one thing no one told me was the horse will naturally come to a finish at yeah. the end of the gallops because they do this every single day. So I was looking at this bush and the forest ahead of me as we were getting towards the top of the gallops and thankfully the horse slowed down. And then I had to do an interview straight after that so I was like completely out of breath, not fit. <laughs> So that was my first introduction to a gallop and I just realised how difficult it is and how fit these jockeys were. So I had six weeks before Cheltenham to get fit. So Only six weeks? That's really not very weeks. long though. And I, was, I was not race fit at all. So Mick Fitzgerald gave us some help and he just said, you know, I think it was Mick who said, um, put on Coronation Street or something and like sit down like a jockey yeah. as long as you can because it builds the strength in your legs up. And I went on the equisizers, um, and we were, I was extremely lucky. John Joe O'Neill and JP McManus, or well, JP McManus gave me a horse and I was able to ride in his colors, which was a huge honor on the day. And he was there in AP and it was, it was, a, it was an incredibly special day. My family came over from Ireland and John Joe said before I got up on the horse, he said, whatever you do when you get to the far end of the race course, just try and remember to look back and look back at, you know, at the stands and just take it in because not very many people get to ride around Cheltenham and look back at that view. Yeah. And I remember to remember to do that. And I was thinking, oh Christ, there's a long way to go. <laughs> so I just grabbed onto the road. I was like, my knees were- There's a lot of people here feeling, as well. <laughs> but there's a lot of people there and I had that feeling of, I think my knees are gonna buckle. And when they talk about the famous Cheltenham Hill, you don't realize what a hill it is until yeah. you're trying to canter slash gallop. <laughs> up that hill and the horse I was on uh, was called Silent Joe and I just I remember looking in front of me and thinking there's loads of horses in front of me so I turned around and there was no one behind me so I was like oh god so I came last in the race I retired that day I was horrendous the horse took me around safely um but I think we raised 250,000 pounds for cancer research That's amazing. which was amazing and I woke up the next day and I was like, gosh, what an incredibly lucky person to, to you know, ride in J.P. McManus's colours, to have met all you these went wonderful You went in a high. Yeah, I went <laughs> in a high. I was given a DVD after the race. I can't remember what channel covered it. And they said, you know, there you go, you should watch it back. And I put it into my laptop about a week or two later when the dust had settled. And there was just a shot of me riding around the parade ring with the big back protector. I looked like, I don't know, a naughty dog or something. And, <laughs> and the commentator just said, oh, you know, Rachel Wise on Silent Joe, she has a lot of work to do. And I just, I've, I turned it off and to this day, I've, You've never, never, watched I've never watched it. it. I think we should get it that It was out. that bad. It, it was <laughs> horrendous. But that was my first introduction to Cheltenham. And I've been there every single year since then. Yeah. Since 2011. And you're going to be involved in another way this year as well, because I believe Tim has a runner as well. Tim has a runner um, called Just Cause. So I think he's qualified. He's hoping that he'll get through. Um, and I think they'll race him maybe once more beforehand. But it will be, and it will be on Gold Cup Day on the Friday. So that would be so special for him. So yeah, fingers crossed. He'll Are you going to ride it this time? Absolutely not. <laughs> he's banned me. He was like, can I see that video? I was like, no way. Have you You've burnt never, it? It's gone. I think we might try yeah. and get hold of that. Yeah, we will. Yeah. <laughs> um, so where, were, where will you be based throughout the week? So you're going to be in the Racing Brakes Lounge with yes. us. And then who else are you working for? So um, for the last six years, I'd say I've worked for a company called Paragon. They do a corporate um, thing, which is just by the finish line, which is amazing. So you get to see all of the action. We have about 100 guests that come in. Mick Fitzgerald comes in uh, with us. Um, Peter Scudamore as well and a jockey will always come in and just talk through the race mm -hmm. card for the day. It's not work at all. I mean, going to Cheltenham for the whole week and yeah. talking about horses and being there at the racetrack and it's just, it's really special. And then and then I'll be with you guys. You will, and you're gonna be with, as you say, Mick Fitzgerald, who you're gonna yes. be with in the other box, and then also Alan Brazil, who I believe you're also very excited I'm to I'm really meet. excited to, to meet Alan. So I live in Newmarket now, as you know, and I travel to London four days a week, so it's a 100 mile trip each way, mm -hmm. which is a long journey. And I'm usually going in in the morning, so he has a breakfast show, and my good friend Natalie Sawyer is on talk sport as well. So I'm always tuned in to him on the way to work and to her on the way back from work. <laughs> so yeah, I love his breakfast show, so I'm looking forward to meeting him. And then my last question yes. is Ireland or England for the Presbury Cup? Ireland. That's, that's like, of <laughs> Not course. even a thought. <laughs> 100% Ireland, hopefully. Brilliant, thank you very much.